welcome back to Clint Street Machines. I'm Clint, and today we've got the uh, wheels and tires for the front of our S10 project. So uh, let's have a look at those. All right, so welcome back to the channel. I was perusing eBay and was able to find something I've been looking for for a while. Matching fronts for our uh, Centerline Combo Pros. Now, they do sell these new uh, and online, depending on what's available and what isn't. Apparently, the supply chain is affecting rims, too. Um, a couple weeks ago, for instance, I could only find a 4-inch and a 10-inch online. Now I can find 4, 10, 7, and 8. Now, I'm talking width. I'm sorry. Wide. Uh, so, we decided to go with a 6, and this I had to pick up used, uh, and I got a great deal on some really clean wheels off eBay. They're the right bolt pattern to fit our Ford spindles, and uh, they're basically in light new condition. Uh, they're a newer version, so that's why they got the sticker on there. Uh, they did come with center caps, which are these. And uh, I don't like those, man. <laughs> these are like the 90s or 2000s style. Um, so I'm not a huge fan, but there's still a million of these available used And luckily they fit and That is the engraved plastic 70 style so the real difference between these two caps besides the obvious differences in size Is uh, this is plastic and this is metal these pop in from the back so they're much less likely to fall off or be stolen um, but they can also create a little bit of, uh, they can create a problem if they stick out too far past the uh, mounting flange. Sometimes, and I think on these wheels that is the case, instead of just talking about it. My concern is that when I put a straight edge on this, it's, it's actually rocks on the cap. It's, uh, the cap sits further out than the wheel mounting flange. So uh, I'm afraid that's gonna keep it from balancing properly or being properly uh, screwed to the car. So I'm gonna put the old style caps in because A, they look period correct. Um, B, they're still readily available, brand new, which is amazing to me. Because I don't think they've, been, they've really used these caps since maybe the 80s. But, uh, what the hell, I just popped one in yesterday. When I got here, I popped them in to make sure they fit. Now this one's being a pain in my booty. Oh, there we go. All right, so there they are. As you can see, that looks much more vintage. Uh, again, the problem with this is, well, that, same problem here. The difference is, this can push back out as far as it needs to. Now the problem with these caps, and the reason why I think there's still so many brand new ones available, even though they haven't been made in a lot of years, uh, is because these are famous for falling off. They're also famous for getting stolen, because you could just walk up and pop them right out. Well, a thief could, I can't. <laughs> okay, so there's a reason we went with a six inch wide wheel, because like I said, I could have gone with a four or a seven also. Four inch wide wheel, would give us that pizza cutter look, which is what you really do want if you're really going for a true pro street look. Uh, meaning if you're trying to make your car look like a pro stock, they would have skinny front tires. Um, here's the thing about skinny front rims, and I'm gonna consider a four inch or smaller to be a skinny front wheel. I actually watched a guy in Van Nuys, California in a big block 69 Chevelle come around a corner at about 20, 25 miles an hour or whatever. He wasn't flying, wasn't hauling buns and totally folded up one of his front wheels coming around the corner, and I saw it happen with my own two eyes. So that's something I've heard of and seen personally. So because this is gonna be a street car, and it's gonna spend most of its time on public roads, and I live in Tennessee, you never know when you're gonna come around a blind corner and have to lay on the brakes. So if I'm doing 30, 35 miles an hour around a corner and have to stand on my brakes, I will absolutely fold up a four inch front wheel. So I decided that's no good. But I didn't want a 7, which was the next size still available. Sorry. Well, a 7-inch wide rim would be an inch wider than this, and you can get a lot of wheels to fit that. That is a common size on the front of muscle cars. People usually run either a 7 or an 8. Um, the problem i got to worry about is we're running a manual steering in this thing, so we don't have power assist. Um, so at really low speeds, a really wide tire is going to be very difficult to turn. 
and uh, we're using a smaller steering wheel, which makes it worse. So I want to keep the narrow front wheel uh, to basically keep the rolling resistance off of it. So when I'm trying to back into parking spots and things like that, I don't have to really struggle and strain to get the wheel turned. Um, the second thing about that is I still want it to be a pro streeter. I still want it to look like a drag car. And once you get into the seven inch wide front rim, so that's looking a little less like a drag car, right? So that's important. The other thing is it needs to be thin because we're, I've started mocking up our front suspension and we're probably gonna have to run quite a bit of caster in order to make everything fit under the hood. So um, with a manual steering, mechanical, yeah, manual steering. With manual steering, that's even worse. Right, that's uh, the more caster, the more caster you have, the harder it is to turn the wheel. So there's a lot of things going against us that kind of begged for a four inch wide front rim. But the other problem with the four inch that I forgot to mention is that you don't have much contact patch, which is desirable for acceleration on a drag strip, but it's not desirable when you need to stop it from 60 miles an hour on the freeway because there's, you know, a car stopped in the road or something. Um, we're gonna to have to play with the brake bias between the front and the rear. I'm gonna to have to try and make sure that my rear suspension uh, keeps the wheels planted when I'm on the brakes. There's a lot of things I gotta think about, but going to a four inch wide wheel makes it just so much worse because it's really hard to stop a 3,000 pound vehicle with two four inch wide contact patches. So, eh, I would need this thing to stop when I push the brakes. So, we decided we wanted to go with a six inch wheel with a five inch uh, wide tread pattern. And we went ahead and ordered the tires too, because I knew what height I wanted. I wanted a 24 inch tall tire. So this is what it looks like on the rim. So that's gonna work out real nice for us. Um, I had to go this low in order to lower the truck as far as I did. Uh, and at this height, I have three and a half inches above the tire till it hits the bottom of the fender. So uh, that should be plenty. As you, like I said, I went with a six inch wide wheel with a five inch wide tread. Usually, and I'll get into this more when I do an actual wheel and tire episode, generally you want the tread width, and it goes from the corner, the part actually touching the ground, but you want the tread width to be about the same as the rim width. Meaning you want this tread to be the same width as this distance here. By going a little smaller on the tread, you get the stretched look, right? So as you can see, the sidewall comes out like this. It doesn't round off and go back in. It comes out like this. Now, if I went with a wider tire and a thinner rim, it would come out, it would come out like this. The more balloony it is, though, the, the handling is much worse. That, the sidewall moves around too much when it gets really balloony. And uh, the same when it's straight up and down, that's what they're designed for. But I think by going with a little thinner tire, I'm getting an inch wider than I would with a 4-inch wide rim. Because uh, I can't put a 5-inch wide tire on a 4-inch wide rim. It would be balloony and really dangerous around the corners. But by stretching it just a little bit like this, this sidewall will be nice and rigid going around corners and whatnot. So this should actually handle pretty good and only has a five inch contact patch. So I should still have that lack of rolling resistance. I thought I would go ahead and show you guys how I mounted this tire using no tools <laughs> in case you guys want to do the same thing. A lot of drag racers use pry bars and stuff to mount tires and dismount them, but you can really damage the edge of a aluminum wheel doing that, like really damage it. Um, matter of fact, the guy that took the tire off one of my back rims, damage the living daylights out of it. So that's why I'm not using pry bars. So uh, yeah, let's take this rim and our new tire and let me install that for you guys. It's a pain in the ass, it's labor intensive. It's like 90 something out here and I'm sweating already. This is gonna be ugly, but let's do it. All right, so this is the tire I picked. And the reason I picked it, <clears throat> this was the cheapest directional tire that had a five inch wide tread and a 24 inch tall height. That's it. <laughs> I would have picked it no matter what it was, but I got lucky because it happened to be a tire I really like and have a history with, and that is Kumo. This is a Kumo Extra. Um, I've had these on several performance vehicles, and they're really grippy. They handle great. They don't make a lot of road noise. There's just, they're really good tires. These are actually made in Vietnam. Right there it says. So uh, I thought that was weird. I didn't know that. But uh, this is a 175 6515 for those of you who are keeping track of that stuff. So yeah, basically I needed a directional pattern because the back tires are directional. Now, I could have bought Hoosiers for the front of this truck. Um, they're $280 each for some stupid little skinny front tires. I'm not paying $300 a tire just because they match the back. These were $101 each. And like I said, they weren't the cheapest tires I could have got in this size. They were the cheapest directional tire I could get in this size. Um, 
if I wanted to go with just a plain Jane passenger car tire, these are like $65 all day long. So I, I just couldn't justify spending $300 a rim, uh, a tire, I mean, on the front, $600 versus $250. just doesn't make any sense. So uh, maybe later when we're made of money and this isn't still a budget build, I'm going to do an episode on that because some of y'all are thinking this isn't a budget build because I'm spending money on it, but believe me, I'm not spending anywhere near what everyone else spends on their pro street cars. Let's get this tire on that rim. This is going to suck. I'm going to sweat a lot. I'm probably going to turn red. I'll probably look like I'm dying a few times, but we'll get it done. All right, so I got some soapy water. I got my tire. I got the first one I put on because I need to make sure, because these are directional, they have a rotation. I need to make sure this is installed the opposite of the other one so we don't have them going two different directions. So I got the other one up here for reference. So what I'm going to do it here is I got it facing rim up, face up. And the rotation is counterclockwise. So this one needs to be clockwise with the rim face up. Uh, there's a rotation, it already is. Okay, so in order for that to be, yeah. So it's gonna go like this. But here's the thing. We can't, um, we can't install it from the backside because the thing about putting tires on is the tire's diameter in the middle of the tire is the same as the distance from here to the other side, right? From here to here. This is bigger than that. So there's no way it can go on there unless you either stretch it or you get some other, you get a, a little play somewhere, a little slack. And this is what this is for. Every rim's gonna have a spot like this on it. I think go-kart, there might be some go-kart wheels that don't, but any rim where the center of the tire does not stretch, these do not stretch. This is what this trough is for. By dropping the edge of the tire into this trough, it moves this side out here so it can go over. So that's the whole point of that trough in tires when you see it. All right, so um, we have to mount it face down so that we can tuck the lip of the tire into this groove. Keep calling it trough. Groove's probably better, right? So because it belongs like this, we need to put this tire over and install from the other side. All right, so now we can install it face down from here. So what we'll do is we'll just get it started and then we gotta get one side tucked up into here and then we can force the other side in, right? Soapy water helps immensely with that, although this looks like it could use more soap. But we're gonna go ahead and get it all wet, hopefully a little bit slimy here. All right. This is just a matter of shoving and pushing. So we'll just push it down. There we go. And you see what we did there, right? Slip that right into that groove. So now we should be able to oval shape it enough to get it around the corner. And then when it gets out to this end, it's just a matter of kind of oval shaping it and forcing it through. Again, we gotta make sure we keep it in that groove or we'll never get it on. All right, so I'm just gonna keep pushing and try to get this thing on there. Okay, so we are here to here, right about the halfway point. Once you get past the halfway point, you don't have to worry about it popping back out as much. So let's, there we go. There we go. <laughs> okay, now let's flip it over. Now we gotta install the front, but let's double check our rotation before we get too far. Uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, all right, we're good. Well, that went pretty easy. So uh, let's get on the second part of it. Sorry, my nose, nose starts running when I start sweating and exerting myself. So I apologize if it's grossing y'all out. Same kind of deal on this uh, lip. We gotta get it down, tucked in, to that groove. So we'll do that, get that started. All right, right at the halfway point here. Uh, same situation here though. This lip has to go all the way down into that groove. Right now it's not. 
So I can't really go much further this way until I get that pushed down. So I'm gonna move the camera and I'm gonna show you the easiest way I found to deal with this. All right, piece of wood on there to protect it. So what I find works best, step on it with one foot to get it down into that groove and then push it around with your other foot. Now, I don't know if it's in far enough to do this yet, but let's try it. Okay, so get that down low like that, and step. So you can see it's going on there now, and that, that's staying down in that groove now. So I don't have to put my foot on it, but I'm gonna do it anyway for both balance and to make sure that stays down and out of the way. All right, that's probably close enough for what we're doing here. Let's put her back up on the workbench. All right, so now that we got it that far, what I find generally works pretty good is a big old rubber mallet. That way I don't damage anything if I accidentally hit that. But this should come on around. May not have it far enough in yet. If you get tired of stepping on it, I could have kept stepping on it, probably coming on around, but there we go. What I'm trying to do is hit it right above that lip there, like right in this area, and at that kind of an angle. You can see it works. Actually, it works better to hit it out here and knock it straight down. Is that down there? Yeah, it's still out of the way. There we go. Believe it or not, that was a workout for my old ass in 92 degree weather. The front lip seems like it's kind of touching where it needs to be, but the back lip is not. So what I'll do is, in order to put air in this, I'll lay it down. And I'll give it a couple of shoves while I'm putting air in it. So like I said, we got to give it a couple shoves. And we might have to do that while it's trying to fill. Sometimes there we go. Just has to catch enough to let the air to catch most of the air. And we'll fill this up until this pops out. There it goes. Still moving out. All right. All right. So that's it. The uh, it's not that hard to put on a small tire like this. You just got to use a little muscle and uh, understand what you're trying to accomplish as far as getting the, the bead down in that groove. So uh, there it is. Now, we only have 50 some odd days left to the No Name Nationals and the truck is very far from done. So I was thinking about the fact that I could have knocked those frame rails out in a day or a day and a half if I wasn't filming. And I would have saved the three days it took me to edit that video too. So that's like four and a half to five days I to do a one day job. So I might not film a lot of what I'm doing between now and then. 
because I need to get as much done as possible. So what I'll probably be doing is showing you a little bit of the work in the form of an update video. I can show you what I did, show you a little bit of how I did it, give you an update. So anyway, there's a heads up on the format change um, if I do it. So uh, we'll see as time goes on and we get closer to the Notre Dame Nationals. I'd really like to get a lot done on this truck between now and then, so we'll see. Anyway, that's it for today though. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. We're building a 1989 Chevy S10 Pro Street pickup if I haven't already mentioned it. So if you guys wanna see that, it's a uh, big block Mopar powered and so far, it's got all Ford suspension in it. So I, uh, I find it very interesting on how we're gonna piece all this together. So hopefully you guys do too. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it and we will see you guys next time. Hopefully I'll be a little less sweaty.